Barbara's passing has left a wound that we don't know when it's going to be healed. But as our daddy, Samson, Tommy said, he has faith in God. We have faith in God. He trusts in God. We trust in God. Daddy, thank you for such words our faith and our trust in God is what is going to help us as a family and love so how come you came up and skewed out all these things that you said your daughter said man in a fight especially if it's public it is my duty to defend you. And in a struggle like that, defense is never the truth. Defense has to do with what it is that it takes to make sure that you don't lose the struggle. It may be later on. You can go and make friends with her and apologize on my behalf. So if anybody deserves a certain kind of sympathy today, it happens to me Thank you.
this is the appeal not so to bring out the uh, biography of Barbara Tom. It was 27 years, 4 months, and 12 days ago that the Creator saw fit to release a gift called Barbara Hamia Tommy into this world. This gift was born on the night of May 14, 1993, at 37 Military Hospital in Accra, Ghana, to her father, now retired Captain Samson Heponu Tommy, and her mother, Francisca Ajomensa. Barbara got her first name from her father. He was away on military assignment in Christmas of 1992, and Barbara was still in the womb at the time. But her father sent a postcard to his family where he wrote to his son, Perry, say hello to your sister, Barbara, for me. And then the name stuck. She got her middle name, Falia, from her mother, who was a teacher. And as a teacher, one of her favorite students was named Famia. She was beautiful, brilliant, and studying to become a pilot. Our Barbara, Miss Famia, indeed grew up to be beautiful and brilliant. She never did become a pilot, but she flew to great heights in her 27 years on this earth. She didn't need a pilot's license to soar like the free spirit that she was. Her ambition, her inner beauty, and her victorious mindset gave her all the licensure she needed to fly. First, Barbara was ambitious. She was committed to her education. She attended services basic school in Birmingham, Ghana, and then Meadowbrook Middle School in Orlando, and then received her high school diploma from Apopka High. Of course, she forged ahead to pursue higher education, beginning at Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton, later transferring to Valencia Community College where she received her Associate of Arts. But she pressed on for her second degree, a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and Finance from the University of Central Florida. But if you know Barbara, you know she was full of drive, so she couldn't stop there. She went ahead for her third degree, which was a Master of Science in Marketing from Marvin University. And she had just begun acquiring this, this degree when she transitioned from this life. See, this is the kind of ambition and work ethic Barbara had. She worked her own way through school and paid for her own education without a single loan, all debt free. And her ambition was not just limited to her education, but rather it permeated her career. After working for five years at Navy Federal Credit Union, she actually earned the position of assistant branch manager and was training to be promoted to branch manager at a different branch. When she left, she literally gave her best to her job until the last few seconds of her life, serving the public by wanting to open the doors to me. That was Barbara. She gave her all. But beyond her educational and professional achievements, Barbara was beautiful, and I don't just mean physically. Beyond the beautiful exterior that housed her spirit and her soul, Barbara had a profound beauty that radiated from within. She epitomized grace. She was so classy, so humble, so elegant, and she knew it. She had a beauty that stemmed from virtue. I'm going to list three virtues. First, selflessness, then kindness, and genuine love. As far as selflessness goes, Barbara placed the needs of others before her own. She loved the people he created, and she loved them deeply. So much so that she was willing to be an advocate for them, especially when they were vulnerable. She loved so deeply so that she was willing to see the best in others. Willing to forgive the most treacherous of offenses. It's no wonder that when we see her, we, we marvel at her beauty because it was not superficial. It was deep. It was rooted in virtue. And thirdly, Barbara was victorious. The very evening before
before she passed on when she was with her family. After eating banku and okra soup that her mother had prepared, she engaged her family in a game of monopoly. And they must have forgotten that she was a banker. Um, because she, she cleared everyone's properties for herself, bankrupted them all one by one. And when the game was over, nobody wanted to admit the defeat. Nobody wanted to admit that she won, even though she had won fair and square. So Barbara jumped out of her seat. She's pounding on her chest and she's screaming to her brother, to her brother Perry, tell me I won, admit it, tell me I won. And on this 26th day of September 2020, Barbara, Famia, and Tony, we gather here and join not only your brother Perry, but we join your mother, your father, your older sister Sophia, your younger brother Daniel, your nieces Eliana and Shiloh, and your mother Jennifer, your grandparents, your aunties, your uncles, your best friend Regina, and many other friends and colleagues. We all join here together to tell you that you won. They try to silence you, but you speak even louder in death, my dear, you won. They try to cut short your life, not realizing that you would end up saving many other lives by giving inspiration to leave abusive situations for one. And they try to rob you of your peace, not knowing that they were actually ushering you into the presence of the Prince of Peace. Famia, you were. Amen. 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 Our dear Barbara, our dear Famia, you were and you still are victorious. Until we meet again in eternal glory. Fare thee well, Famia. Fare thee well. Oh 
trees and we now call upon the Navy Federal Representatives, Jordan and Arturo and Luisa Dossi.
we're currently working on getting a plaque made that will be um, forever dawned in the lobby of that branch. More than anything, and I can assure you that all of us at Navy Federal that had time to work with her will always remember, and that'll be the real way that she really is forever remembered in the hearts and minds of Navy Federal. And with this opportunity in front of the family right here, I just want to say thank you for raising giving us this opportunity with this wonderful person. And if just knowing her, you must be the most wonderful people. And we just thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. I 
and vulnerable, and I don't like the sentence structure of the poem. So, <laughs> it says, there's a quote that says, love is made up of three unconditional properties in equal measure. Acceptance, understanding, and appreciation. Remove any of these things, and the triangle falls apart. You're more than just my triangle, Barbara. You are my rock.
and so is our friendship. We became friends in ninth grade algebra class. She was good at algebra, I needed help because I wasn't. The first time we spoke, we spent hours on the phone talking about God, Christianity, what it meant to us, and who we wanted to be in this world. When we finally got off the phone, I knew I met someone who understood me, and that I found a really good friend. As the years went on, as the years went on, we became separate. So much so that people would stop us and ask if we were sister or twins. We would laugh, and eventually we said, yes. And to me, she was. Barbara was someone that I completely confided in. I could be completely vulnerable with her. Whenever you had conversations with her, you had her full attention. She was never in her phone. And you never had to repeat yourself. Even if she didn't agree with what you were saying, she was able to understand where you were coming from. She was always patient and had the most giving heart. In high school, I used to tell her I love you, and she would never say it back. So I asked her, why don't you ever say it back? And she said to me, Gina, you're my sister. What's understood doesn't need to be said. At the time, I thought she was being slick. <laughs> but she showed me every day just how much she loved me. We were always there for each other, no matter the time. Everything we supported each other. Barbara was my sister and my soulmate. We planned out the rest of our lives. We were so excited for her future, sometimes even more than her. I knew I could make it through anything as long as I had her and that we would be in each other's lives forever. We spent almost every day together and we would never want a day without talking. The separation hurts, a void that cannot be filled. Not a minute goes by, and I don't think about how she's doing, or if she's okay. We never said goodbye to each other, and I never will. I know she looks on through her family, her nieces, and all the people who were struck by her kindness. We were so lucky to have her and witness her life. Amen. God gifted us one of his best angels, and I love you forever.
because you don't know what is going to happen right from here. We don't know. It is a mystery. I can't tell you. We know in part. We prophesy in part. It is a perfect time that perfect all things. Any man of God who will tell you that he knows everything is a liar from the pit of hell. Yeah. We know in part and we prophesy in part. As was sitting right over here. So God couldn't tell me that tomorrow she was, she was going to die. She was talking to Bishop Bernard in the morning while she was going to work. Then the God from them, Bishop, that hey, tell your daughter that she was going to die. We don't know. And it's a mystery. You don't know where, how, and when. But I read it. And as my friend, the Lord, you cancel it to this day. Even as I dip their spirit, their soul and their body in the blood of Jesus, that no weapon formed against them will ever prosper. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we magnify you for having done them all. In Jesus' name. Let's mother say, say, Amen. We would be remiss if we did not say thank you to the presence of God, Nana Abdul Dhamma, to the ambassador to Ghana here in the United States, serving as well in Mexico and the Caribbean. His Excellency, Dr. Carfour, Bala, thank you for your presence. Thank you for the outpouring of love and sympathy that has come from across the world to let the Tony family know that the people from God are indeed praying and standing with them during this difficult and time, trying time. It's difficult and trying time. To the officers and members of the Navy Federal Credit Union, thank you. Thank you for your solidarity and standing with this family. Your life's most darkest hour. You as well will be thanked at a later date and a more appropriate time and place as the circumstances of life deems it most appropriate. At this time, we shall acknowledge the floor contributions that grace this church today. We are praying for peace, to bring comfort and courage to face the days ahead, and loving memories to forever hold you in our hearts. With love and remembrance from Pastor Earl Green and Lady Latoya Green. Our thoughts are ever with you, though you have passed away, and those who loved you dearly are thinking of you today. With deepest sympathy from Barbara and Tyree. You said it best. Love and light constantly surrounds us when we are not consumed by the pains of life. The time that you had here, our memories of you will forever be in our hearts. You will be missed dearly. From Linda, Kate Lord, Princess, and Lakeisha. To the Tommy family, my dearest condolences during this time of loss. You are and will continue to be in our prayers, which, which with much love from Tabitha Haynes. Your presence we will miss, your memories we will treasure, loving you always, forgetting you never. With deep sympathy from Ryan Henderson. She was a daughter, an older sister, a mentor, and a friend. Through everything that she spoke, there was light, and through everything that she did, there was grace. The epitome of kindness, resolve, and beauty, she lacked nothing but gave everything. We loved her not solely because of who she was, but because of what she stood for. She stood as a model for unwavering faith and love. Her kindness ripples through our hearts, and though she is gone. But when I look around and I think things over all of my good days, I've lived my bad days, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low, and I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord, Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they cannot see. I'll simply say thank you, Lord, and I won't come to my And to the family in closing, for 27 years, 327 months, 
1,425 weeks, 9,979 days, 239,496 hours, 14,369,760 minutes, 862,185,600 seconds. God said to Barbara, rest from thy labors, thy work is done. On behalf of the Paxville Funeral Homes USA, Sandra Sandline President, to the Tommy family, we present to you this memorial blanket. Oh, the 